Usually when you arrive at one of our services, there's somebody there to greet you. But at the moment, while our churches are closed, both St Mark's in Peaslake uh, and St James just down the lane there, of course that's not happening. So I thought today, just before we begin our service, uh, I'd pop out to the front of the rectory uh, and welcome you inside. Yeah, there are the bells. Time to go. Good morning again and welcome to our service of morning prayer here in the rectory at Shear for our whole parish which covers the villages of Peaslake, Gomshall and Shear. I hope you've downloaded your service sheet uh, in which case let us begin. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also, and also with, with you. you. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. And so as we worship this morning, meet us, Lord, as on the road to Emmaus. Guide us on the path towards our destination and renew our strength as we continue to walk and commune with you. Open our eyes so we see the signs of your presence around us. Open our hearts so we may receive your peace and love and empower us to pass on to others the grace you have shared with us so freely. Amen. Jesus says, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Risen one. Like those disciples on the road to Emmaus, we struggle to recognise you in the everyday journey of our lives. We are so full of ourselves and so crammed with the sights and sounds of living that we simply fail to see you or to recognise your voice. We interpret scripture in ways that obscure the signs pointing to you and we are guilty of being slow of heart so that we don't recognise you in our neighbour or in the guise of the poor or the dispossessed. Lord, forgive us and open our eyes and hearts. Amen. And so may the God of love and power free you and forgive you of your sins, heal and strengthen you by his spirit, and raise you to new life in Jesus Christ, his Son. Amen. Blessed is the Lord, for he has heard the voice of our prayer. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy, and we, the song, we will praise our God. So we're going to praise our God with our first song today. Uh, some words fitting today's theme of the Emmaus Road, but to a familiar tune. In the garden, Mary lingers. In the garden, Mary lingers, broken and forlorn. Then an unexpected greeting names her in the dawn. So she meets her risen Saviour on the resurrection morn. Evening journey to disciples grieving for the dead. Find a stranger walks beside them, cheers their hearts instead. Finally they recognise him as he breaks and shares the bread. 
Ten distraught, confused apostles hide away in fear. Rumour that the grave is empty, they are shocked to hear. Yet when Jesus stands among them, dread and sorrow disappear. Every day a fresh beginning, newness come what may. In the most unlikely places, Jesus reigns today. From the past to new horizons, Christ our Saviour leads the way. And so the night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. And so as we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Uh, Now we're going to go to Rosemary uh, in Ewhurst, who's going to be reading our Bible reading for us today. The reading is taken from St Luke's Gospel, chapter 24, beginning to read at verse 13. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognising him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognised him and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they too told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the Gospel of Christ. 
In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hello, please can we have our pilgrim passport stamped, says the voice on the phone. It's always good to get such a request, as it means that I shall shortly hear the story of someone's journey along the Pilgrim Way from Winchester to Canterbury. Having walked that uh, journey twice, I'm always interested to find how other people are doing the walk. Is it one person doing the walk, walking meditatively along the route? or more often two people walking together to share the experience. It's rarely more than a couple of people. And yet when Geraint led the pilgrimage from here many years ago now, we went in a group from the parish. When we get requests for the stamp, I'm always pleased if the sun is shining, because on the whole, I remember that our walks were generally in the sunshine Occasionally there'd been rain beforehand, and I do remember, as I'm sure Beryl does, walking through loads of mud on one occasion. Well, I enjoy hearing how far the pilgrims have walked that day, and are they intending to go much further before their overnight stop? We were always encouraged that we should walk two thirds of the daily goal before stopping for lunch, so that then we knew we'd covered more than half the distance before setting off for the final push that day. We had a goal for the day, and indeed we knew where we were heading in the final point. Journeys tend to already have a goal, so people set out to follow a route to take them to the end of the journey. Pilgrimages tend to allow more space and time for reflection. Mostly there is an end place, very often a sacred place with a particular resonance for the pilgrim, but nonetheless you are journeying at the same time. Many, many people, indeed some from this parish, have made the pilgrimage along the Pilgrim's Way from England to Santiago Compostelo in Spain. It's a long and hard journey, especially if you're carrying your own sleeping things. There are stopping places along the route, but many travellers are making the journey very much as a pilgrimage. Some of you may know there's a film called The Way, about one man's journey which he is making in memory of his son. He carried his son's ashes with him along the way and eventually laid them to rest when he reached his destination. During the walk, he met a whole variety of people, some walking with specific intentions like him, but others just for the challenge. He had many conversations and these had a big impact on him as he travelled towards his destination. Today in our reading, we hear of two disciples walking away from Jerusalem to Emmaus. Luke's a wonderful storyteller, and this very familiar narrative is told by him alone. It comes as part of the end of Luke's Gospel, after the crucifixion and, of course, the resurrection. The two travellers are joined by a third person, who of course we know is Jesus, and they walk along together. <laughs> Emmaus lies west of Jerusalem, so the disciples are walking into the sunset. Surely we as Christians are called to walk into the light of Christ. So here we have an unsettling note. It seems the disciples have turned their backs on their previous experiences. It's almost a comical conversation with the unrecognised stranger who's joined them as they tell him that they had hoped Jesus would redeem Israel. 
but that hadn't happened. They are so distressed that all their hopes are dashed. They pour their sadness out to the stranger, the stranger who listens. I'm sure we recall being told, don't talk to strangers. And it's a mantra that children hear all the time. But there are times when, as the writer of the letter to the Hebrews reminds us, angels sometimes come in the guise of strangers. So we do need to be alert. As he responds to them, Jesus leads them on so that he can try to help them to begin to gain some insight into what has actually happened. At that stage, he wasn't letting them know who he was. He draws on the scriptures, which those two disciples would have read, and like a good teacher he is, he guides them, without forcing them, to gain some understanding. This is exactly what happens in our schools these days, especially for the younger children. They're given space to explore their environment, to ask questions, to see for themselves, and to come to a deeper and clearer understanding of what they see in the world around them. And that way they remember. Luke continues the story and tells us that the stranger, having tried to help them understand what's happened in the recent days, shows his intention to leave them and go on his way. It's a story almost in two parts. He doesn't want to intrude on their supper, but when he indicates he'll go on his way, they give a fulsome invitation to him that he should join them for supper. Hospitality should always be shown. And so he stays with them for the meal. And as he breaks the bread, they understand who the stranger is. But he's gone from their sight. Their journey away from Jerusalem into the darkness of the sunset has totally changed. Light is shining through. They'd started their journey in despair, but suddenly everything's changed. So they turn their backs and rush towards the daybreak to Jerusalem to share with the other disciples their news, their lives filled with the light of the risen Lord. It's a wonderful story, full of hope. We are living in difficult times times that we don't understand and which are making us unsure. There are times of great sadness and uncertainty. Yet amongst them, we hear of the wonderful commitment of people who are showing so much kindness and support in so many ways. We see people coming together to support each other, to reach out, to help in so many different ways and possibly unexpected ways. We pray that they've come to know the light of Christ. And so we pray that when we walk in darkness, we see Christ as our light, that he holds us in his loving hands. During these troubled times, we pray for Christ's peace to be with everyone and the power of the Holy Spirit helps us to tell of the glory of the resurrection. Amen. Alleluia. Thank you, Rosemary, for our reading and thank you, Judy, for our sermon today. In her sermon, Judy said how Cleopas and his companion headed west out of Jerusalem. But Christians are generally supposed to face the light represented by the east, the rising sun. That's why most churches are built facing east, or at least with the congregation facing east within it, and therefore with the altar at the east end, as here in St. James. 
Another Anglican tradition is that when we say the creed, we stand and we face east towards the east end of the church as we do so. Uh, and so as we say our creed today, uh, I'm going to turn to face the east end of St. James uh, and I invite you to join in and say the creed with me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Thank you to Jonathan Cross for sending me this photo. Uh, of St. James, which has made this illusion possible. Uh, and uh, we're now going to go over to Gomshaw, to Martin, who's going to be leading us in our prayers of intercession. We sit or kneel to pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. O oh Lord, we pray to you in this time of trouble, confused and uncertain, as with the apostles, when, on the third day, Mary Magdalene and Joanna, and Mary the mother of James, reported that the body of the crucified Son of Man was no longer in the tomb. We pray for comfort in our confusion and uncertainty. Lord, in your mercy. Not knowing the way forward, in unfamiliar circumstances, we seek your guidance, Lord, asking each other what to think. We turn to the teaching of your dear Son and pray for clear understanding of its meaning. Lord, in your mercy. Dear Lord, we pray for ourselves that we shall have the strength to live with the bonds we now suffer through the present pandemic and which weigh down on our friends and our families and keep us apart from them. Lord, in your mercy. Keep safe, O oh Lord, the doctors and nurses and other carers of people of all ages and faiths who selflessly look after those who cannot look after themselves. Lord, in your mercy. Comfort, O oh Lord, all who are unwell, in body or in mind. We particularly pray for all who are distressed by the restrictions on normal human interaction, who are used to relying on the help and love of friends and neighbours, and are confused by the changes they don't understand. Lord, in your mercy. Bring comfort, Lord, to the families of those who have passed over to the eternal rest you have promised all of us who die in the faith of your beloved Son. Comfort those who mourn, and let us see the light that is beyond death, that shines as your welcome to all. Lord, in your mercy. And give us grace, Lord, to see what we can do for others in this time of trial, and to see that it is more important than what we can do for ourselves. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all your saints, we commend ourselves and all Christian people to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Martin. And we continue in prayer with the collect or special prayer for today. Almighty Father, who in your great mercy gladdened the disciples with the sight of the risen Lord, give us such knowledge of his presence with us that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life and serve you continually in righteousness and truth. 
through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. So we conclude our prayers by saying together the words of the prayer that Jesus himself has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you for everybody who uh, helped lead today's service and thank you to you uh, for joining us. If this is the first time you've joined one of our services, uh, it's good to have you with us uh, and I hope that you'll be with us next week. If you haven't signed up for our newsletter, which gives you details uh, about our services and about other things that are happening in our parish, please email me, rector at parishofshear.com, and we'll add you to the list. So we're going to uh, bring our service towards its close with our second and final hymn. Uh, it's another one, especially for today, perhaps unfamiliar words, but with a familiar tune. Emmaus Bound on Easter Day. Emmaus bound on Easter day Two travellers walked along the way They once had hope, but hope had died When you, O Lord, were crucified When you appeared Beside the two, they could not see that it was you. But as they talked and shared their pain, you gave them hope and joy again. For as you spoke to them God's word, Explaining all they'd seen and heard, They understood what God had done, And that a new day had begun. They shared their home, you broke the bread, they saw you risen from the dead. That moment's grace helped them to see the gift of God's eternity. In scripture and at table too, O risen Lord, may we know you, and may your presence give us grace to share God's love in every place. Uh, and thank you to Carolyn Whitney Gillette, who wrote the words to that hymn and allowing us to use them today. So may the blessing of God, may the presence of Christ, may the joy that those disciples knew as they recognised Jesus in their home be with you this Easter tide and forevermore. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you all this day and evermore. Amen. With the risen life of Christ within you, go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, 
Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.